about efficiency, it's about effectiveness of what you're doing. The next part is the something called the yellow book. These are the generally accepted government auditing standards. They're called GAGAS. And actually, I did bring my copy of the yellow book. This is what the auditors look at when they go out to audit a, an organization in the United States. And many, uh, let me just tell you what, how this came about. The federal government, you know, uh, sends a large amount of funds to various public entities. And they've decided they, they want auditors to comply with certain standards, very stringent standards. So this specifies how a governmental audit has to be performed. And as all the standards, and um, if you don't follow this, you're in trouble. Okay, basically it really, and I'll talk about what these standards are. Basically what it says is that any entity which spends $500,000 or more in federal resources in any year is subject to a yellow book audit. Okay. By the way, this amount, and I won't hold you to this, was just raised to $750,000. So you can still say, think in your mind 500000 for the time being. Okay. And uh, so if you receive or your town or your nonprofit entity receives, not only governments, a nonprofit entity receives from the federal government and you spend $500,000 or more in any one year, you are now subject to a yellow book audit. You hire an auditor and you tell them, I want a yellow book or a gagas audit done. And they'll say, why? Because of this reason, okay? And uh, these are some of the audit standards. I'll go through these quickly. I'll point out to you some of the, because you can read about this. There is an illustration in the book which explains these. Um, so basically, what it is, is you have the generally accepted auditing standards, and on top you have the governmental auditing standards, which add more things to it, okay? So there are general standards, independent standards, in all matters relating to audit work must be independent in mind and in appearance. Ask you a quick question. You're the partner of the audit firm. Can you be on the board of commissioners of the town? Any problem with independence? Definitely. All right. Uh, professional judgment must use professional judgment, obviously. Uh, some more standards, competence. And this is where uh, you have to be very careful because uh, you want to make sure that the staff which goes out to audit has, is adequately trained. In fact, I think under the Yellow Book Audit, you're required to have 80, C 80 RCPEs every two years. And there are uh, 24 of them have to be, we'll go through the list, have to be in the governmental area. So you just can't take regular auditors and say, okay, go ahead, do this stuff, okay? Um, and there's quality control, and, and you'll see more examples in the book about that. Uh, for instance, quality control, if you do a governmental audit, every three years, or every five years, you're supposed to have another audit firm come and review your work papers, peer review, to make sure you did things right. And if you did not do them right, they would have to come back in 18 months again to see if you're doing things right or not. So there's this peer review process that has to take place too. Some other things uh, should be, you know, you have to make the information available during audit planning. The auditors uh, should evaluate whether it has taken appropriate corrective actions. And uh, this is interesting because this second point is uh, what you'll find it is that at the end of some of the audits, you'll have findings 
and recommendations, which you don't find in commercial audits. And basically what it says is, you know, we found this problem. This is what needs to be done. Well, next year when you go back to audit that, what's the first thing you're going to look for? Making sure that those findings and recommendations were addressed. Okay. And that's what this refers to. And there are other things, you know, as I spoke to you about internal controls, non-compliance, fraud, or abuse. Governments have to be very, very sensitive to this. And why are governments so sensitive to this ty type of stuff? Because what happens if something goes wrong? Where does it end up? Where do you see the news? Well, it appears in the Star Ledger or somewhere else, as we saw in New Jersey. And something very little can really cause big problems. So governments are not, are very highly intolerant to these cases of non-compliance, fraud, or abuse. Okay? And, that, and the auditors have really a critical role in examining that. Documentation. As someone said in the back, you know, documentation is, is as important as in, is in the commercial sector in terms of being able to review the work. In governments, it's even more because in governments, you need to make sure that if somebody comes back and checks your work three years later and you don't have it well documented, you're in trouble because of the peer review. And we saw the reference to governmental auditing standards in the report. This is, these are the reporting requirements now that we are looking at. Bless you. When the financial statement audit report contains an opinion, you know, uh, and you need to, you know, uh, on compliance laws and regular and provisions of grant must be provided as part of the report. So these are, uh, and again, I'm not spending too much time. I'm just going to go over things that uh, seem the most interesting. Uh, if there are any uh, areas where there are deficiencies, you need to bring that up. Okay. And this is what happens. When governments have a problem, the auditor has a problem, they'll send a letter to the CFO. Or will, in their internal control letter, they'll say these are the problems. The CFO has the right to respond to that letter and say, you know, you looked at it, but you didn't really do it right. And that response has to be presented as such. So it cannot be an unbalanced report. And it does happen. Now, this might not seem anything to you at this point, but believe me, these little things, and this only comes from experience, can mean major headaches. And, um, and for that reason, government auditors as well as those people who work in the finance side really need to be very, very careful in the areas of internal control and uh, compliance issues. Now, what you'll also see is that um, in many cases where there are, there are audits and where there are individuals involved, for instance, if they have an audit uh, of Medicare, or Medicaid rather, the auditors will block out all the sensitive information so that people do not have access to it. And also, there is a statement at the end of the audit which says that this is a public document. You know about that, right? In New Jersey, we have the Open, Oprah, Open Public Records Act. I don't know if you know this. You can literally get any information you want from the government on any aspect of what they're doing just by simply sending them a letter and they have to respond to you within 10 days. How do you think newspapers get that information? That's how they do it. By the way, the same applies to the federal government, except for confidential information, personnel-related information. You can literally get any 